Hello everybody, I'm Jeff and welcome to my channel. I'm here to teach you what I've learned over the past 40 years. Whether you be a beginner or an advanced cook, I'm here to teach you or help you just go over what you might have forgotten. So let's have some fun here and while we're at it, please down below hit the like and subscribe buttons along with the notification bell. That way you'll get any new videos that I, that I put up. And if you could also please hit the share button, share it with your friends. I'd like to see my channel grow. Thank you. Now let's get to cooking. Hello everybody. Thank you for visiting the Camp Cook. I'm your host Jeff. Today we're going to be making pork chops. We're actually using a piece of loin. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I know there's a lot of people out here who don't know how to cook, don't know where these cuts of meat come from. This is the same piece that they use for the pork chops. The only difference is they've cut the bones off. We're going to cut this up today and we're going to cook it on my magicator over here today. So let's get at it. Okay, I've got this nice piece of pork loin here. It comes in a cryo pack. Uh, cryo packs are probably the best way to buy them if they've been wrapped up out of the cryo pack and they're wrapped up in uh, saran wrap at your store. Try and shy away from a little bit. You want to buy the ones that are in the cryo pack. We're going to cut these nice and thick. Let me sharpen up my knife here. It's already sharp. I'm just going to hone it on my steel here. Okay, we're going to cut these down. I'm going to say right about there. Go through and cut the whole thing. I'm using a slicer knife here. It's a regular knife made for slicing meat. It's different than a French knife. Cut all these things through. I'm going to share these with my neighbors today. They're going to be happy. Okay, now we're going to take, take these. Let me get some of these out of the way here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just slice along like that in the next pattern. And that's going to hold some of my seasoning. I actually went a little too deep on that one. Okay, I'm going to go through each one of these things and do that. What this is going to do, this is going to hold our seasoning in. Some people will take these and rub them with mustard. I'm not going to do that today. I do rub it with mustard off and on, depending on who I'm cooking for and what their taste is. Mustard uh, basically holds the uh, seasonings on for you. And it gives it a little bit of flavor. Just real lightly. You don't want to cut all the way through. Kind of like when you're scoring a ham. No specific amount of cuts on each side. Just score them. I'm just using the weight of the blade. I'm not pushing down on it. As you can tell, my knife is razor sharp. Be careful with your knives, folks. I would suggest having your knives sharpened if you don't know how to do them yourself. A dull knife is very dangerous. Sharp knives do the job, and you don't get hurt so often. You don't get cut if you're careful. I'm leaving the fat cap on there. The loin is a generally lean cut and it needs that fat. Whenever you have the fat, leave it on there. I say this is just to let the seasoning go in. Doesn't dry it out or anything. These are real thick cuts. Yeah. A little snack for the chef, a small one. Okay. Now what I've got here is my own seasoning blend that I make. I don't share the recipe with anybody because it is my seasoning, but it's basically everything you have in your uh, cupboard. I'm just going to season those liberally. I'm not going to put these in the refrigerator this time. Normally you would put these in the refrigerator for about an hour, maybe two hours. So let, the, let it dry out a little bit. That way you'll get a nice sear on it when you put it on the uh, grill. I'm 
just put the seasoning on, rub it in. My seasoning is close to essence of emerald, emerald's essence. So if you want to buy that, you can get the same effect of what I do. Oh, I forgot to score this one. That's all it takes. It's nice and hot and humid out here today. It was pouring down rain this morning. Absolutely pouring down rain. Okay. Now I've got my grill going. I've had my grill going for about 45 minutes, um, heating up. It's a different style of grill than what most people have. Um, Magicators have a water bath underneath. Let me take my gloves off here, move my camera around. Okay, as you can see, I'm trying to change my glove. These are those. Uh, these are made in China. They're size triple X. Their triple X won't fit a munchkin. But I'll have to make do. Okay, I'm going to go into my deep fryer here and grab some oil. I want to oil my grate before I start putting the putting the uh, pork chops on. That I just take a paper towel, dip it into my fryer. Go over it like that. Then I'm going to place my my chops on evenly. This is a very old grill. This grill is probably 20 years old. That's a small one. I'll put it over here in the corner. Keep an eye on it. I'm going to let these go. I don't need my gloves anymore. I'm going to let these go for about five minutes on each side. We're going to bring it up temperature up to 150 to 150 um, degrees centigrade. Or, I'm sorry, 150 to 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that'll leave it safe temperature of 65. But after we take it off the grill, it'll continue to rise in temperature. And you want to let them set for about 10 minutes afterwards. And by the time that 10 minutes is there, the internal cooking will reach up to 165 and they'll be tender, juicy, and safe to eat. Now you don't want to play with these all that much. You just want to let them do their thing. I'm just going to check the bottom here. I'm starting to get that score. So what I'm going to do, go through and just turn it just a little bit. That way you get that X pattern on the bottom. It's just for show, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, it's been about five minutes on this side. We're going to flip them over. Get the other side done here. Go ahead and put my grilling glove on. Got that from my neighbor behind me, Roger Thorpe. Probably the best neighbor I've ever had. Let those go for another five, five minutes or so. Now you can see in the top here, you see that white stuff coming out. That shows that it's actually cooking inside. And the way this grill here works, like I say, this is a Magicator. It's got a water bath down below. Uh, that water bath heats up. The steam comes up, and you can't really see it that well right now, but the steam comes up and helps distribute the heat evenly. Um, this is a very expensive grill, almost $14,000. Uh, long story how I got it. I didn't pay that much for it, but um, it's actually it's here for the church to use. It's a donation for the church. They don't have any place to store it, so I store it here. I got it for them. 
whenever they need it, they can use it. So, but in the meantime, I'm using it for my videos. Very good product, commercial product. They use it for banquets. Like I say, it's called a Magicator. They look much better, like this, better than this when they're brand new. But this one's worn out. But it's got a lot of life left in it. Okay, this one's at 155. I'm going to take it off. Some of these others are a little cooler. That was still at 147. We're going to let that go a little while longer. 155. Let these go for about three more minutes. They should be done. I'm going to check each one of them. Folks, buy one of these uh, digital thermometers. Have a regular thermometer as well, in case you don't have any batteries. But the digitals are fast read, pretty accurate. One in the center there. A little longer than that one. That was 149. We're going to let it go a little longer. It's been about 15 minutes all together. That one's at 155. I say these are going to sit here for about 10 minutes. This took a little longer. Um, I took my meat out and let it sit out before I uh, put it on the grill, but it should have been out a little bit longer. Okay, these have been resting for about 10 minutes. It's time to plate them up. Grab one of my pork chops here. Grab a little bit of these crumbled onions and potatoes. Ooh, that's hot. I had it sitting in a side uh, side warmer. Oh, this looks good. Some of them potatoes on there, those onions. Slide that over. Okay, and I got some of this coleslaw here. Coleslaw always goes with the uh, with pork chops. Made this yesterday. Take a nice healthy scoop out. Put it on there. Clean it up a little bit. That's all there is to it. Pork chops made from a pork loin. I say it's a pork loin. It's the same thing as a chop, except they cut the bone off. I got some. Uh, fried potatoes with caramelized onions and some coleslaw. Okay, some tips for today. Make sure you take your meat out of the refrigerator and let it warm up to room temperature for at least an hour, hour and a half if it's super cold. That way it cooks up a little bit faster. Today I pulled it out cold. I uh, have been pushing against the wind so I took a chance at it and pulled it out but it's up to 100, 155 degrees inside um, by now it's up to 165. That'll be perfectly safe. It'll be nice and juicy. If you cook it up to 165 on your grill, like they say, it's going to be dry. It's going to be some of the driest chops you've ever had. So I just want to say thank you and try it and enjoy it. Folks, I'd like to thank you for watching today. Those of you who watched to the very end, thank you so much. There's so much we can learn. We're all at different levels. Some are beginners, some are advanced. The advanced uh, cooks, they only want to sparsely watch the videos of beginners, you can learn th some things. So please, watch them all the way to the end. And once again, like I said at the beginning, please like and subscribe. Hit the buttons down below and share it with your friends. Hit the uh, notification button so you know when I have new ones. And as always, may Christ be with you always and God bless. There's only one way to heaven and that's through Jesus Christ. Thank you and have a blessed week.